I don't have a joke for today. Yeah, but I have lots and lots of photography news. Ironically, there's not that many. But we start off with the geekiest of the news. Sony managed the world first, again. They have created a CMOS back illuminated sensor with, drum roll please, there's no one there. A global shutter. What? Yes, that's right. If you're a bit unfamiliar with all these terms, CMOS stands for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. It's basically what most sensors are made of nowadays. Back illuminated is a technology which allows the sensors to gather a lot more light, therefore perform a lot better in low light. It has been common for a while on smaller cameras, and we're starting to see them on big cameras too. The A7R2 being the world's first 35mm with one. Finally, global shutter is a readout method where the entire sensor is read and stored at once instead of what basically everyone else has, which is a rolling shutter. You know the wobbly lines you get when you do fast pans? It's most noticeable on video, and global shutter can fix this. And now we're a step closer to everyone having one. Huh? What, what's that? When will we see the first camera with this, you say? Ah, uh, mm, well, you know, the, this sensor is uh, 1.4 megapixels, so soon. And more Sony news, sort of. Canadian company Ribcage, apparently known for modifying action cameras like the GoPro and the E Action Cam, now has modified an RX Zero. What kind of modifications, you say? Well, how about an interchangeable lens mount? The Ribcage RX Zero, as they call it, has a Micro Four Thirds mount and a screwable C mount as well. The camera has other new features like a built in IR filter and it's physically larger. It's almost a completely different product, but it's quite cool. And like I mentioned, they also modify other cameras. So if that sounds cool to you, go check them out. Oh, and the Ribcage RX Zero, it's 1099 and ships the beginning of March. So last week, Nadia talked about the teasers for the Galaxy S9, but this week we get leaks about the camera mostly. Both the S9 and the S9 Plus are set to come with a 12 megapixel sensor and a variable aperture lens, one of the first on the smartphone. It's f1.5 wide open, but closes down to f2.4 when needed. The S9 Plus will also come with a secondary camera, same sensor, but with a more telephoto lens and a fixed aperture of f2.4. Like the teaser suggested, we're also set to get some really impressive slow-mo capabilities. 960 frames per second. That is hands down the fastest, or slowest, we've seen out of a smartphone. That's 40 times slower when played back at 24p. Hopefully compression doesn't make this unusable. Man, we're really seeing some cool tech on our phones recently. Another thing we talked about weeks prior was a drone that came dangerously close to a commercial flight in Las Vegas. Well, now there's reports that suggest that a drone, and this time a DJI Phantom, was responsible for a helicopter crash. A student was piloting the helicopter at the time when the instructor spotted a Phantom drone enclosing on them. He took over the controls trying to dodge the drone, but the back of the helicopter hit a tree and caused them to crash. No one was seriously harmed, and now there's an investigation on the way as the drone pilot got away. And finally, Panasonic announces the G. Wait a second, we already covered this. What? What are you doing for crew shooters? I'm kidding, I like that side. And now it's time for shorter news stories. Cine Lenses is a new app with a database of over 2,000 lenses and 500 rental houses. Now you can find just the right lens for your next project and know where to get it as well. Looks like Foxconn and Red have confirmed that they are teaming up to make those affordable AK cameras. Lock Circle has a new matte box, the No Looks matte box. It not only blocks light, but it absorbs it as well just like my soul. And Tamron teased yet another lens, but there's also leaks about it. The 70-210 f4. Announcement date is set to be February 22nd. What? But that's like tomorrow, said someone watching this on the 21st. Also leaked are images of the Samyang 15mm f1.2 for Canon EF mount. For now. Nisi Filters has a square filter holder for smartphones. Wonder if it works with dual cameras though. Probably not. And we have more leaks on the Pentax K1 Mark II. Images this time. <laughs> that looks the same. And Fuji has an upcoming 200mm f2 lens. They teased it and we have sketches for it too. Lastly, we have sample images taken with the upcoming Sony 400mm f2 G Master, the one that was spotted at the Olympics last week. Also, just an Instagram post, so no pixel peeping. And that's all I have for you guys today. I told you it was a little bit short. Hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, hit the like button, get subscribed, hit the notifications button to be notified of when these videos come out. You wanna stay up to date, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> Either way, we'll be back on Saturday with another episode. Nadia will be hosting that. You know the drill. All right, I'm out of here. I have no place to go.